Hello guys, welcome to our new video regarding how to build a desktop for your daily use. This is a Scala desktop with uh, nothing so high, such high specs on it. It's basically something that you can use on your day to day work and day to day basis. We will start off with the motherboard right here. This is a micro ATX motherboard and uh, it's socket where the processor goes in is basically the socket is a LGA775 socket. The north and the south bridge uh, this is the Intel G31 Express North Bridge and the South Bridge is the Intel ICX7. It has two RAM slots and the power supply is a 24 pin. On the input output ports at the back, we have a standard keyboard, golden type of keyboard and mouse connectors. We have the VGA connector, which is the standard display connector. We have four ports of USB 2.0 and a 10 Mbps Ethernet connector with three audio ports, one being for sound output, one being for output or input, and the other one being for microphone. It has a few connectors, expansion slots right at the bottom here, which is the PCI Express 16X, this is the PCI card going over here, and this is the PCI Express card. This is your CMOS battery, which basically stores all your information in terms of time and date and settings for your BIOS. These here are your SATA ports, which we currently on this board have four of them. Next, we move on to our processor. The processor that we fit on this motherboard is a Intel Pentium Dual Core 2.20 GHz. This is a LGA775 socket processor, and anything similar to the same socket will be able to go in here. But this being for a client of mine who requires it for a server, a DHCP server, a Pentium Dual Core should be enough for him. So for starters, we'll have to put the processor inside. I'll just move the shell down here. So as you can see, the processor has grooves over here which have to be aligned right into the socket which is right here and here so this settles up right on the top and fixes in unable to move put this latch on top and this is the lock that locks onto the processor making it firmly tight inside next we have two RAM modules here one is a 1 GB DDR2 and the second is a 512 MB DDR2. Again, the specs seem to be very low, but for this client of mine, this build is quite decent enough for the job he needs done. So, RAM modules go inside this slot right here. And based on the groove, on the RAM module, as you can see over here, hey, it's a small groove right here goes right inside here so you have to just place this here like this make sure it's aligned into this groove right there and press on both sides to you get a clicking lock where these white things lock the ram in position same with the second module as well place it in and lock on both sides rams are in place now we need to connect the fan this is a standard cpu fan used for standard machines if you go for gaming machines you'll find something with a bigger heat sink thicker would have copper uh, conductors here allowing to distribute quicker and uh, be able to put it out from here this is actually placed here so that the heat from the processor can be pulled out onto the fan allowing it to be able to cool as quickly as possible 
if your cooling is not good enough for the processor, the PC will tend to shut down every few minutes and it's trying to avoid to the processor to get damaged. So this fan is good enough for a processor like this small. We're plugging this in. Before that, we will need heat conductor paste, thermal paste, also known as thermal paste. So we'll place some of this paste on top of the processor like that. Should be good enough. This fan is a clicking mechanism whereby you need to turn the knob and click it inside these holes so that it can lock on and hold onto the processor. Since at the end, the PC will be standing and your board will be placed this way. There are other fans that come with a screw. So for those, you will have to have a bracket at the back, which will then have a screw holding it off the bracket. So you have a bracket in the back and the fan on the side holding it from this way. So this is a standard fan that usually comes with a processor like this. I'm just uh, setting up all the screws to lock as soon as I place them in. Slowly put it on top of the holes so that it's aligned up on its face and start pressing them in. And there you have it. The fan is firmly secure on the board. This is the power connector that will power up the fan. And we have a power module uh, connector for the fan right on this side here. So we'll connect this up right here. And that bit is done for the motherboard. Next, I'll be using a 250 GB standard hard drive because the server software itself is hardly 200 MBs. So this should be good enough. I have a DVD writer which I'll have to put on the shell as the front panel is completely open. As you can see over here, there's no cover for it. This is not used actually these days very often. That's why in such new gaming machines you don't even find them available. But I'll just be putting this one in case I need to go back up the dogs and save it somewhere. Yes, the guy trying to fire it. I have a standard power supply here. This is basically a 300 watt power supply. Sufficient enough for a small board and a decent amount of devices itself. This is the I.O. panel for the back of the motherboard, which will be added on to the chases. This is a SATA connector that will connect from the motherboard or to the hard drive or the CD-ROM drive so it can transmit data from and to and from the hard disk and the motherboard. Uh, this is a chassis fan allowing it to have more extra cooling air coming inside the uh, PC. And as you know this is the chassis uh, front panel and the side panel. Thanks guys for watching the first part of how to create your simple desktop. We will be continuing the assembling of the desktop on the second video which will be at the end, the link will be at the end of the video and also at the description and uh, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and do comment on what kind of videos you would like us to create so that we can spread and give you more knowledge on how to do basic IT things at home or in your company.